script cat here a little under the weather you can still hear it's been a long week uh if you follow my scopes uh, last week i did a, a two-day rewrite on a project i was brought on as a script doctor this is something that you can do uh when you start working in the business you're not always always going to be selling specs obviously uh, but in between writing assignments, you uh, might be hired to do script doctor jobs where you come in and, and uh, fix a screenplay. Uh, so you have to realize that it's not all a, always about you know, a new script. Sometimes you have to come on board and fix a script. Uh, and your disciplines and techniques and knowledge are going to be able to help you do that. Um, but today I want to talk briefly about uh, overwriting your screenplay. Uh, I just read a script recently. There was a paragraph like this that described everything inside the house, the exact details of the furniture, what the walls look like. I mean, literally like the wallpaper. It was ridiculous. Um, you have to learn to detach from the work and, you know, what your job is as a screenwriter is to place the scene, not to describe the color of the wallpaper um, or that the chandelier... Um, has a diamond you know it's diamonds unless that's important to the script uh, same goes for clothing you know these are all things there is uh, experts who take care of that called a costumer called a art director and a set designer this is something that we have to stay out of as screenwriters um, and I feel so many I mean I know so many times screenwriters want to have a, a they hold on so desperately to those words and they want their damn it that vision has to get through because they don't they expect that nobody understands what they're trying to do but you have to stay out of the way of it you know as they say less is more that's exactly true with the screenplay no one wants to see a page filled with words they're not going to read it they want to see white spaces so the key with the screenwriting is to condense completely what you want to tell in the shortest amount of, you know, in a condensed and condensed way. So if you can tell it in one sentence, do it. If you can tell it in half a sentence, do it. But don't write paragraphs this long about describing, you know, the kitchen. Who cares? The kitchen is the kitchen. In fact, the kitchen that you envision will not be the kitchen that ends up in the movie. Um, so what you want to do is start training yourself not to write that way and even in your first drafts because it's a waste of time people say oh well my first drafts are always long and then i cut them down why not write them as if it was the last draft you ever were able to write the first one not knowing that you might have to do 10 after that or five write the first draft as if it's the last draft you'll ever write because that's going to train you for the time when you do have assignment work and that's the bread and butter of working screenwriters are is script assignment jobs, not specs. Hey, welcome from Turkey, right? Good to see you, man. I was talking today about overwriting. Long time. I'm a little sick under the weather, but I'm surviving. Thought I'd just do a periscope and see if there's anyone out there. And you showed up. Thank you. India, that's right. India. Sorry, my apologies. We're talking about overwriting today many scripts I read that are just completely overwritten and many times um, you know there's not enough story to facilitate the movie because it is so overwritten so when you start to dismantle and take apart scenes and cut this and cut that you end up with an 85 page script shows me that there wasn't enough story to write a screenplay or the characters weren't developed enough also the overwriting I read a script last week had a big paragraph this big about describing the kitchen had no nothing to do with anything else just went on for a paragraph describing the countertop was marble and the appliances and you know that's not our job as storytellers to describe the kitchen uh, the art director will speak with the director and producer and they'll develop the art director and set designer will read the script and, and give proposals or the location manager more importantly if they're not building the sets they go find a house and they go guess what this is the kitchen End of discussion. So there's no need for all of the, the you know, the excruciating minutiae, the details of everything. It's not important. You have to write only what is important in a screenplay. And 
when you start working professionally, that's extremely important because no one has time to go back through and development and say, you know, you, this paragraph is too long. It, it shows that you're an amateur, basically. If a script comes in and you're doing this much uh, about the kitchen, I get distracted by other ideas from writing one. Um, funny, I don't have that problem. I wish I did. When I'm, I'm a one idea workhorse, when I'm on an idea, I, I can't work on other ideas. In fact, I, I push them aside because my, my whole life and focus is on one idea. Um, many people can work on multiple. They can work on two different screenplays in the same day. I, I, I can never do that. And you have to find, um, your strengths and weaknesses as a writer, obviously. And if you can work on projects, but if you're distracted, <clears throat> you might want to train yourself just to forget about those other ideas. And they're, they're there, and they're only there when you go to work on them. And they're, you know, you can think about them when you're not working on them, but don't think about them when you're working on something else because you have to give your full 100% uh, percent, uh, into that one project and live and breathe it, not working on it and go, hey, you know, I'm thinking about this other one. Something's going to go bad here, you know, in this project while you're thinking about the other one. You know, if you clock out, then you can go, and obviously, but that's just my opinion. I've never been able to work on multiple projects at the same time. It just doesn't work for me. Um, so, like, when I get done with something, I'm like, whew, and I like to have a rest, and then I go right back into the, to something else, or the same one. You know, the script will come back with criticism, and then you got to... Work on it again. So my point today is about avoid overwriting your screenplay. It's, it's one of the basic uh, examples uh, to show that you're an amateur. If the script comes in long, um, you have a certain format to tell a story. Not 120, 140 pages. 100 pages, usually, screenplay. 105 maybe, maybe 110 if it's an action movie. But don't write things that are that are un that are not necessary for the story, or the screenplay. Describing things that don't matter. I find so many describing how the, one script I read, the guy, he has a neck scarf that is, oh, blah, and it went on and on. A paragraph about the lead actor's clothing. There's a costumer who's going to read the screenplay. You know, the costume designer? Read the screenplay and say, hmm, I think I kind of know the character. He's dashing, he's, you know... Uh, he has confidence, so I'm going to dress him that way, you know. So that's how the other, you know, artists work together. But you have to give them a chance. You, yes, you lay the groundwork in your screenplay, and then you have to trust them. You can't hang on desperately to the pages and go, no one understands my words, and they're not going to understand it, and, you know, they will understand it. And you're, you're stepping out of your bounds as a screenwriter. It's not the idea to describe the wallpaper or the carpet, unless it's extremely important. There's a secret code in the wallpaper. Of course you're going to describe it. But just the general wallpaper? Stay away from it. Anyway, that's my uh, script rant for today. Follow me on Twitter at ScriptCat. Go to my blog, my blank page. I have uh, two new articles up. Um, yes, writers do get overprotective, of course, and they're precious. Writers become precious with their words and their scenes and their script. You can't be precious. You know, you have to detach because it's a collaborative art form, especially when you're working. That's why they overwrite. Yeah, that's why you can't be precious and you shouldn't overwrite because all that's going to be stripped away anyway. You can't turn in a script in a professional situation that has a paragraph about this. Yeah, secret code on the... Hey, that is a good idea. Secret code on the wallpaper. And then you put on special glasses and you can see it. Bum, bum, bum. I'm in danger. Actually, that's a cool thing. Um, I got to be careful what I say. I'm giving away ideas here. Anyway, uh, you know what I mean. I, I, you know, I read this big paragraph about a kitchen and I was like, what's going on with this? Where, where, what's happening? You know, Or describing the character in a paragraph like that. You know, Less is more. Screenplays only have so much space. If you want to go crazy, go write a novel. You can write as much as you want. But if you're going to work in the, in the uh, format of a screenplay, I would suggest that you do not overwrite, and also especially your first draft. Because when you start working, if you start the habit of having the luxury of just doing whatever you want, 
overwriting and back, and then you're going to hack it down. It takes a long time in the rewrite. You want to train yourself so when you start doing script assignment jobs to turn in that first draft and it's a solid seven, you know, solid seven, not a six or a five. That puts you that much farther along in the development process and the producers are going to be more impressed saying, wow, yeah, the script needs some work, but it doesn't need a lot of work. They don't want to get bogged down with development, especially the companies that make a lot of films, like the ones I work for. They make 15 films a year. They don't have time to get bogged down in a year of development. You know, you want to turn in a script that is solid. Yes, it needs work, of course, but it's already here. It's not down here. Here, we'll get here where it needs to be for production a lot faster than if it's down here. So if your script, you turn in here, and this is the minimum, this is all development notes, bah, 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 and it's going to take so much longer. So train yourself now to write the script, your first draft, as if it was your last draft. Make it as the best draft possible. Why vomit out a bunch of crap? You know, it doesn't... When you have to go back and rewrite, it should be just fine-tuning. It shouldn't be a complete rewrite. Page one, why waste your time with that? And you're not going to have that luxury, I'm telling you, when you sign a contract and you work on assignment work. Thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Anyway, my voice is going to give out. As I said, I have two new articles on my blog, my blank page over on WordPress. Um, you can find that on my website, 5oclockblue.net. There's links there to everything. My new app from Yap, uh, Screenwriting Guru, sends out bi-weekly script tips. Also, uh, the link to my archived webinar. You can Rent it for street streaming download rent. Streaming download rent. Bye bye. Take care. Uh, the archived webinar is fourteen ninety nine, broken into two parts, and also there's information there uh, about my screenplay consulting services. So as I always say, keep writing. Mm -hmm.